Hey comic book fans, welcome back to the Mostly Indies channel where we focus primarily on creator-owned and independent comics. My name is Mo Bay Bordy and I'm thrilled to be bringing you a triple review and synopsis here for issues one through three of Marjorie Liu and Sana Takada's Monstrous. Let's just cover briefly first what the story is about and why fans are so excited about it. This is a story set in an alternate post-World War I Asia, in Hong Kong. In these first three books, we're seeing two uh, main uh, groups, two sides. Uh, on one side, we've got the humans who are aligned with the human witch nuns, witch hyphen nuns, uh, or Kamea, and uh, they make up the, the uh, human federation. They are engaged in an ongoing struggle, battle, a holy war with these human-animal hybrids referred to as Arcanics. Our heroine in this story, Micah, who is 17 years old, has a psychic bond to a monster. This is an unwanted connection. Uh, this bond is turning her, it's changing her and turning her monstrous. This demon, this, this monster that's bonded to her, it is a form of, uh, of a weapon. It is an ancient weapon and it's extremely powerful. Something that, you know, really both sides that we uh, just laid out would, would like to have their hands on and, and to be in control of. We are following Micah as she is searching for answers uh, about this, this, this bond to this creature um, and she's trying to detach herself from it, that's, that's the end game, and she's also looking for answers about her deceased mother. Uh, we're going to keep it as high level as possible uh, for your sake, uh, for your reading pleasure. Um, you know, I really enjoyed reading this series. I'm excited to continue uh, with it uh, in issue four when that comes out. And I definitely don't want to rob you guys of that experience. So uh, you're welcome. I took a little care here in the details that we're going to pull out of the story. What is it then about this book, uh, about this series that you know, it makes it that rare reward that comic book fans, you know, hope that they get a couple times a year if we're lucky, as long as we follow the industry closely enough. What is it about this story? Oh, that's easy. It's the two C's. What's that? You don't know what the two C's are? I'll tell you. You gotta come in close, though. That's a little close. The words class and consistency were what came to mind first for me when I was just asking myself at the early onset of writing this review what it was about this series that was that that made it so special uh, consistency being something that you hope for you look for um, in any uh, series that, that you would read and class being that optional thing um, and I, I mostly mean artistically here but I think you see class even in, in, in the in, in the way that it's written in, in terms of this whole class thing you know you take a book like uh, Fraction uh, Hawkeye okay this was an awesome book there's a reason why I you know I, I wanted to have it um, this this book uh, you know the pace of it the, the humor everything uh, that, that they're trying to do here they did but it wasn't like they stepped up to you know the to the plate and then pointed out towards the fences and said like we're going for it you know e even on the artistic front you get the sense that with this project, um, with, with, with Monstrous, as you flip through this, um, even this first issue, I mean, this is an undertaking. You, you just envision that the artist has really r probably run herself into the ground drawing this thing. She's probably exhausted. Uh, but, you know, take a bow because this, this is absolutely stunning. Marjorie's precise script for this series and Sana's epic art combined to effectively convince you uh, all along the way um, of these of these very human uh, expressions that that are that are happening in front of you. So you know you got determination 
on Micah's part. You see that a lot. You also see, you know, it's mixed with confusion, it seems, which makes sense because, I mean, she really doesn't know as much as you even kind of think or hope she knows in the first book. You know, in some of the characters you see evil, it's, it's cool the way it's done. It's like, you know, evoking the, you know, some of those better uh, witches that you remember from, you know, your childhood and anything animated, either from Disney or elsewhere. And if that range wasn't enough, I mean, I, I'm a 36-year-old grown-ass man, and what this creative team has done to me here with this adorable little fox cub named Kippa, get out of here with this Kippa character. Uh, she's so smart and brave and, uh, you know, you're just, you're rooting for her. I know alpha males who are crazy about their cats, so I can't be the only one here that doesn't want to just grab a brush and brush Kippa's tail like two, three times the best day ever. This story isn't really about cute. The series is rated M for Mature for a reason. In the course of book one, neither the story nor the art pulls punches as it introduces you to the brutality of the witches who routinely capture, torture, mutilate, and perform experiments on the part human, part animal arcanics. Much of book one is spent following Micah as she is captured and taken into the Kamiya compound. On purpose, that is. This is her intention. Micah, who, as we said before, is bonded to a monster and is thus looking for answers, uh, was never really in the same predicament as the Arcanics who she was sold into slavery with and taken into the compound with, uh, such as Kippa. And maybe uh, that makes for a very explosive uh, last two-thirds of that large first issue. And, uh, and maybe that's why I give this book overall B.A. Badass status. Yvette is found to have a somewhat deep and dark history with Micah's now deceased mother. Um, and Yvette is very evil and cunning, like you would expect any of the elder uh, witch nuns to be. Now, there's a lot to talk about here in terms of, you know, what transpires, you know, when you encounter these elder witch nuns and their subordinates. Uh, the, the build uh, in those last two-thirds of the book, the larger part of that first book, uh, the build is, is awesome. And, you know, I swear you can just hear that the orchestra, you know, get, getting rowdy and, 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 and some violent smashes. You know, everything is building towards the end. I think that's all I'll say about issue one, and we will uh, move on to uh, book two and, and three here. Um, but just a quick word uh, about the creators. Uh, Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda, they live in different countries. They've got that as, as a barrier here, or what would be a barrier uh, for this creative team. They have the language barrier, and you know, by the account of their translator in an interview that I read online, um, that, that this doesn't slow any of this down. These two, they have a closeness that they share um, that, that definitely transcends language, and I think that's really cool. And you can tell they're a tight team. Now I'm gonna spend uh, a little less time on book two and three. Uh, mostly, I just wanted to, you know, wet, wet your appetite here for this. I want you guys to, to run out and pick it up for sure. If you can't find issue one, go on eBay, get it digital, do something. I wouldn't wait for the trade on this one at all. Book two, we meet Mother Superior or Destria. Uh, she's a holy mother of the witch nuns, uh, very feared and respected, very powerful elder peer of Yvette. She brings with her uh, arrival her personal coven of inquisitrixes. Uh, there are four of them. Uh, three that you see initially. Hammer, I mean we're talking about a huge hammer that this, that this uh, lady carries. 
um, doesn't seem to talk. He just uses hand gestures, which is, is like the quickest little moment of, of, of comedy in there when she does that. We also learn a little bit about uh, the artifact that Micah took from Yvette's chambers at the end of book one. Um, this is a powerful artifact. It is a fragment of a mask. She's warned that, you know, if she handles it for too long, it will taint her, uh, changing her form and her soul. And it'll forever turn her into an outsider, even among the Arcanics. So book two, in a nutshell, is all about the hunt. Uh, these witch nuns and the Inquisitrixes, uh, they're all uh, hunting down Micah. And Micah is hunting down answers, as we said before. So for book three, we see a little more this uh, monster that is uh, possessing Micah and is part of her. Uh, at the end of book two, we got a quick glimpse of it. Uh, but in book three, when this fourth inquisitrix named Flay uh, apprehends Micah, um, is when, you know, the shit goes down. Plenty of world building. Um, I even like the, there's this, these one page little features at the end um, that really kind of serve to continue to build this world out. It's like a history lesson given by, you know, three or four tailed cats that, uh, I think one of them smoke, smoking. I mean, it's the strangest thing, but it's, it's, it's cool. It's cute. It's, it's odd uh, in the best way. Uh, so, you know, that continues. And it's just things like that that just make this series so great. Nothing is falling away. It's just building. And it's all, it's all becoming truth to you as a reader. And I think that's really cool. You know, you really wish that you could just put this thing on Netflix season binge mode, but you can't. Uh, and and I, th I think that's an okay thing. That's, that's, that's what makes following comics, following monthly issues like this, and having that anticipation and the interaction with the other fans and the creators, that's what makes all of this so cool. Let's interact. Uh, you know, throw some comments in here on this YouTube video. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Obviously, you've got my full recommendation on this series. Looking forward to seeing what these creators have in store for us. Uh, until next time, thanks for uh, visiting me at Mostly Indies, and we'll see you soon. But I forgot how to feel. Yes, I know Are people still dying Over what